Hi guys, it's Scott here again. In this sixth and last of our detailed drawing series of videos, we're going to walk you through an example of how to go about reading a detailed drawing, particularly so that you can figure out what the manufacturing intent of the part and the design actually is. In this example, we're going to look at a detailed drawing from the perspective of someone who's manufacturing this part. So you're a machinist and a fabricator and you've turned up to work on a Monday morning and your boss has given you this drawing and said, go away and build this. And so you take this drawing and the first thing you do is look at it and check that it is a correct detailed drawing and it has all the things that we require. So it's drawn by a guy called Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, we've got a scale on here. We've got a date. Uh, we've got a drawing number. It's called a bracket, and we've got in the notes here dimensions are in millimetres, that's good. We have a general tolerance on the dimensions that don't otherwise have a tolerance, and we've got a, a symbol here that shows us that this is a third angle projection. We've also correctly got an indication of what the material is, so it's 40 by 10 uh, CS1020, so that's a mild steel bright flat, so a type of steel that we're working with. So the first thing we would do probably is uh, go over to our materials rack and get some of this steel to be able to make our part. So we look at our drawing here and we're trying to figure out, okay, how much of this steel do I actually need? Uh, where is this 40 by 10 millimeter steel used? So if we look at it, that looks like it's probably the 10 millimeter. And this one here, about 10 millimeters, we can see some machining symbols which we've got on here, and this one is actually turned sideways when it probably shouldn't be. Um, we've got a weld, so we know we're going to have to get our welder out today. We've got a hole that we need to drill or make some other way. We're not really sure just yet. And we don't see the dimension for the 40, and we also notice that over here we don't have a dimension on this width. So based on the scales of all these other dimensions and no other indication, we're going to assume that this is the 40 uh, width here of our material and as a starting point that this is the thickness in the 10 direction it may not be exactly that we'll see in a second we get some material at the material rack and we want to start thinking now through what is the implied manufacturing sequence in this detailed drawing we can see that we've got a piece of steel here and another piece of steel underneath it so I want to cut those two bits of steel out we see that one of them is 50 millimeters long, so we can cut that piece out. And the other one, we could cut it to 59 millimeters, but that would be incorrect because we see this machining mark here. So we're actually going to cut this a little bit longer so that we can conduct this machining operation later on to ensure that this is machined flat. And this side also has to be machined flat. So we're actually going to leave a little bit extra on this and then machine it down. So we cut those bits out. We've got our material. And when we first assemble it together ready for welding, it would look like what's shown here in the red boxes. We then um, probably jig it in place. We might use some clamps to hold it still steady while we're welding it or some magnets. And then we get our welder out and we run a weld uh, through here and over here. Now, based on this symbol, we know that this is telling us that we want an 8mm size fillet weld where this arrow is pointing because it is underneath the, the leader arrow. So that means weld the fillet here and then we also see these two lines on the top of our weld symbol and that means on the other side from where I'm pointing over here give me a, a butt weld. So we're going to fillet weld here and then butt weld this side to join our two pieces of steel together. Something like this and then something like this. The next step in our process might be to do our machining to actually square all this up and make sure it's nice and flat after the welding. Welding adds a lot of heat and stresses into the metal and it can bend uh, during that process. So we're going to then go and machine one millimeter uh, off the base here to bring this to a final dimension of 59. So once that's gone, we'll then turn the part over in the mill and we're going to machine one millimeter off the side to bring the final dimension to 59 in this axis. So we take that off and we're getting pretty close to our final part. The next step is to form this hole over here, which is uh, a bit over 10 millimeters or a little bit bigger. And so we, we may think drilling is um, the obvious option, but it's always good to check. 
The reason also that we do the drilling last is to ensure that we get the position correct after the welding and the machining operations. Sometimes we can do it before, uh, but if we're welding and machining, then it might be good to do it later to make sure it's in the correct spot. So before we go and get out our drill, we just want to have a look at our uh, engineering drawing handbook and make sure that a drill is going to give us this acceptable tolerance. And the way that we check that is by going and looking at our table of our tolerances that we've seen in the previous video. We go to up to and including 10 and we look along here and we see that this hole is a 0 90 micron uh, tolerance. And so that would indicate that it is actually a H11 hole. And we have a very useful table in our engineering drawing handbook, which I'll show you. This one here, table A.4, and this tells us general process capabilities. So depending on the tolerance grade, and the grade is the number um, at the end of our tolerance, it tells us the type of tools that we might be able to use to make that grade of hole all the way from these very fine grades where we're using slip blocks and high quality gauges all the way down to more coarse work like milling and drilling and even down as far as sand casting, stamping, die casting where it gets a little bit more um, higher tolerance and a bigger range on our outcome. So we've seen that the, the hole is a H11 and we see that drilling is one of the processes listed in the 11 tolerance grade so we can happily go and get our drill and put the hole in um, and be content that it should end up at about the right size. It's good for you as engineers to see drawings in this way presented to you so that you can um, be faced with the same challenges that the people building your parts are going to be faced with and understand how they're going to think through the process and how you can make that process a lot easier and simpler for them and try to ensure that no mistakes are made um, through ambiguous geometry or ambiguous dimensions and uh, machining indications, tolerances and things like that. So make sure you have a look at some of the examples of the drawings that your teammates are producing and check that you can read them and you would be able to go away and make their parts based on these drawings alone.